into this, but um, how many of you would like to be in a position to where when the Lord deals with you to do something financially or, or really any way that He's dealing with you, maybe He wakes you up in the night and He speaks to you about something that you're able to go and do that. Amen? How many of you know He can't wake you up in the night and, and tell you to write a check for $10,000 to this particular person or need that you've maybe never met if you don't have $10,000 sitting in the bank that, that's available? Amen? Come on. How many of you know that He wakes people up? Did you know that He wakes people up in the night that, that have that in, in store and He just deals with them to go and give to sow that seed? Did y'all, did y'all know He does that? He does that. He, he'll deal, he'll, listen, oh, come on now. He'll deal with people's heart to say, um, hey, I, I want you to sew a pair of shoes into that person's life. And you're like, but I just got these. But I really like these. And he's like, okay. But that's in the heart. And then you go do that. And then, and then that person's like, you have no idea. I was just now asking the Lord for that. And then you meet a need that the Lord knew. And then next thing you know, you never have an, ever have a need for shoes again as long as you live. Amen? Amen? That's how God works. He works in us. But listen, if we're, not obe- if we're not obedient in the little things, he can't ever get over to the place where, where he wakes us up in the night and has us to go and minister to someone that could be a life-changing decision for them. Amen? Is this okay? Some of you guys, I don't know, it's a little dark in the back. I can't see y'all's faces, but um, I hope that you're open and receptive to what I'm sharing because I believe with all my heart, the Lord wants to bump it up. He wants the church to be able to bump up where their, their walk with the Lord, where he can begin, thank you, where he can begin to do more in our lives. Is there anybody in here that would like the Lord to use them at a greater level? I want the Lord to be able to take where I'm at right now and, and over just a short period of time through my willingness and obedience and cooperation with him, be able to use me at a greater level in the next three to six, eight months down the road. And you? I'm serious. And so whether that's whether that's monetarily giving or whether that's um, being led by the Spirit and flowing and, and operating in, in what the Spirit of God is telling you us to do. Um, if you don't, listen, if you don't, the Bible says if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you'll be filled. Amen? So what are you decreeing and what are you declaring over your life? On a regular basis, I just de- I decree and declare that, um, that I'll, I'll flow in, in the Spirit, I'll flow in, in areas of prophecy, and that the Lord will use me to minister to other people. Well, Pastor John, who do you think you are? I think I'm a saint of God and I can be used just like anybody else. And I'm believing and releasing faith for God to be able to use me. Not because I think I'm special, but because I'm special in His eyes. Amen? Just like we all are. Amen? Is this okay tonight? I'm kind of priming the pump tonight. Well, the title of my message, if it's up on the screen, it's Keys to Increase Sensitivity. I believe I sent it up there. I don't know if we have. There we go. Thank you so much. Can we just uh, give a round of applause for the lady that's upstairs helping with our... Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if it's Michelle or if it's... Um, is, is it Estella? Estella, thank you so much for suffering in the, in the hot box. Did y'all know that's a hot box up there sometimes? And so um, I'm thankful for her. She's out of sight and out of mind, but she makes our sermons go so much better. Um, say that with me, keys to increase sensitivity. Does anybody have a desire to be a little more sensitive to what the Spirit of the Lord's talking to them about? Amen? Well, let's look with me at Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I want to share with you what I've just been studying and, and feeding on and looking at, and I'm believing tonight for the help of the Holy Spirit to say some things to you that I didn't say. I'm believing for the Holy Spirit to minister some things to you that I had no idea that He ministered to, but you go out of here and, and you feel like um, you're not the same person. Amen? So believe with me tonight. And, and, and look for the Lord to, to direct you and give you some direction. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 says, I know you're not going to, you may have that, Estella. Um, the Spirit itself, some translations say himself, better translated himself, beareth witness or bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Is there any children of God in the house tonight? I'm a child of the Most High. Amen? And so um, I want to propose a question to you. Should we, as believers, expect God to lead and direct us, expect the Holy Spirit to, to, to witness to us in this life? We should, right? That's what we're looking to. Listen, there's a lot of believers that live their whole life 
they never study along these lines. They never, ministers never speak along these lines. They live their whole life, and they're looking for outward signs. I had a guy the other day, bless his darling heart. Uh, Kenneth Hagin used to say, their darling heart and their stupid head. How many of you know in the New Testament, New Testament believers were not looking for rainbows in the skies for the Lord to give us a leading? Amen? We're not, listen, we're not looking for seven red cars to go by to confirm something in our lives. How many of you know the enemy can, can get you off looking for outward signs? Come on now. You, listen, we're not, we don't live in a time where we fleece God and we say, Lord, if the sun, if the sun rises um, bright and shiny tomorrow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that as a witness from you. If it's cloudy and rainy, then I'm going to believe that it's the... Listen, we don't, as New Testament believers, we have the Spirit of God. Romans, put that scripture back up there if you would. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Everybody say, the Spirit. This is the capitalized, that word Spirit there, that's, that's the Holy Spirit Himself bears witness. There's the key right there. With what? Our spirit, the little s. You see the big s and then the little s? That little s is our spirit, born again, saved and on its way to heaven, influenced by the big spirit, the Holy Spirit, who's witnessing to us as to how we should, how we should make a decision. Come on now. This is good stuff. Because when we're, listen, when we begin to, to begin to look into these scriptures and begin to understand this, all of a sudden, we're like, wow. So you mean that was the Holy Spirit? You, you, you better know it was. The Holy Spirit's trying to help you. But listen, did you know that there have been people that have gone to a premature grave, cut off their life, cut off completely uh, way, way too early because the Spirit of God was trying to lead them one direction and they just, they just ignorantly, without any really sense of awareness of that, went the wrong way and, and, and it cost them their life? Did you know that? I believe it. I, I know it to be true. And, and also, maybe it's even this way where, where you lose thousands of dollars in an investment. The whole time, the Holy Spirit's telling you, don't invest, don't connect with this partner. Don't, don't do this. And you have this thing on the inside of you that's just, that's just bombarding you. But the outside pressure and, and the things of the world and maybe your spouse or something is just really causing you. And you just go and you, own, you do it anyway, and it costs you. Amen. Did you know that when you're, when you're, listen, when you're being led by the Spirit of God, you'll, and, and, and the Holy Spirit, let me just say it this way, the Holy Spirit never misses it. He'll never lead you in a place where he said, like, oops, man, I just, I didn't see that coming. If when we, listen, we can be, we can become so sensitive and, and become so keen on the direction and leading of the Holy Spirit that when he begins to move us in that direction, we just, we just, we just follow right into the paths. And when we, listen, people be like, "Woo!" I had a person tell me one time, they said, if the Lord ever says anything to you about me, you come tell me. I, I want to know. Well, you know what it was? Is that the Lord had, he had actually spoke something to me. I had a, listen, I had, a, I had a, a, an a undoubtable word from the Lord about a particular situation. I didn't tell them a word about it. Lord is my witness. And then when it was all said and done, then I was, at that point, after the, the transaction had completed, I was able to share with them what the Lord had done, and they just saw the hand of the Lord all the way through it. And I don't take, listen, I'm not saying up here that I got this all figured out. It's a daily journey for all of us. But, but we can get to the point to where we remain. Everybody say remain. The key word tonight is to remain in a place where the Lord can continually lead us and direct us to be able to follow His leading. Amen. The Holy Spirit never pushes you. He never, he never um, gets in a hurry. He'll always lead you in a certain direction. And, um, and I want to say this before we move on. Um, I'm not talking about hearing voices. Amen? The Holy Spirit doesn't lead you with a voice and tell you to, to do something. It, it's that inward witness. What did Romans chapter 8, verse 16 says? It's, everybody say, inward witness. It's a witness on the inside of you. Go, go read through the book of Acts, also known as as the book of the Holy Spirit or, or acts of the Holy Spirit. It's where the Holy Spirit began to lead the, 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 the church, the, the um, New Testament church was birthed there at Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit began to lead them all through. The, if you go, you'll begin to see where the Holy Spirit led them to do this, and he led them not to do that. The Holy Spirit is our, is our helper. He's our comforter, and he's wanting to, to take us to places that we've not gone but it's time for us to bump it up. How many of you already know it's time to bump it up? Amen? It's time to, to become a little more sensitive on, on the things that he is dealing with us to do. And also, listen, and also be willing 
to not do some things that He doesn't want us to do. There's some things in our lives that we know are not good for us, that we know are not helping us, that Paul said all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. There's things in our life that's not profiting us. As a matter of fact, they're costing us, but we continue to do them because they're entertaining. There's things that we... That we um, that, we, that steal our time away from the Word, steal our time away from prayer, steal our time away from the things that the Lord's dealing with us about, wanting to get alone with us, and, and, and we allow those things to, to take, take place, and the Lord's wanting us to bump it up a little bit. Is, that, is this okay tonight? So um, let me move on. There are... Um, uh, let's look at um, John chapter 14, verse 26. The Holy Spirit is qualified to be our helper but I'm convinced that there are scores of believers who he is able to help very little because they have not developed in this area of their life. John chapter 14, verse 26, the Bible says, but the comforter, this is the amplified. I love the, the way it breaks this down. He is a counselor. Let me say counselor. What is a counselor? Somebody that needs to tell you what you need to hear to help you do something that you need to do that you don't have the wisdom to do. Amen? How many of you know people pay thousands of dollars to go to a counselor to help in their marriage or to help in their, in their crisis or in their situation? The Holy Spirit can be that person for us if we look to Him. He's our counselor. He's our helper. An intercessor. You know what an intercessor is? Is someone who prays for us and is, is earnestly seeking for our best interests. He's our advocate. He's our strengthener. The, the Amplified says our standby. Someone that's, that's right there next to us. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, look, in my place. The Holy Spirit, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit has come to abide on the inside of us. Somebody say, praise the Lord. He's come to help us to, to represent me and to act on my behalf. Something that the Holy Spirit does is He's always looking to the Word of the Lord for our lives. He will teach you all things and will cause you to recall. He will remind you of and bring to remembrance everything that Jesus has told you. This reminds me of um, Pastor Bracken once said, uh, he experienced the presence of God so strong, the Holy Spirit said to him, he said, learn to recognize my presence. That, that when you get in the presence of God, when, the, when, the, when that witness begins to deal with you and, you and you respond to that and you're like, oh, that was the Holy Spirit. And, and then pretty soon it'll happen again and it'll happen again pretty soon. You become sensitive to that witness and then you get good. And it's fun when you get good. Because now, listen, because now you're someone that the Holy Spirit, He knows if He speaks something to you, you got it. How many of you know like a teacher that's talking to someone that you can, how many of you know when you're talking to someone and that light bulb comes on? You know like, oh, they got it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden, they actually understood what you were saying. That's how the Holy Spirit with us, when we get to that point where He's dealing with us and all of a sudden we're like, oh, that's the Holy Spirit. I recognize that. And then next thing you know, he, he, he took me through a journey to where he began to show me things. And I, I missed it right off the bat. I missed it. And I, was like, and, and I was like, man, that was the Holy Spirit. I knew that I wasn't supposed to do that. And I did it. And, and the Holy Spirit said, I told you not to do that. He, he kind of reminded me, like, I was trying to help you. Hey, dummy, listen. Not really, but um, he'll be, he, he's kind to us. But he'll, he speaks to us the way we need him to speak to us. Amen? So if it, to me, if he wants to call me dummy, he knows I'm not going to take that personal. He's like, hey, I mean, I was trying to tell you not to do that, and you did it, and it didn't go well. Listen, I'm like, oh, that was the Holy Spirit. And then over a period of time, and I'm, gonna, I'm fixing to tell on myself, over a period of time, I got really sensitive to what the Lord was telling me. But then, everybody say, but then, I allowed time, I allowed distractions, I allowed just stuff in my life to begin. I, I quit being sensitive and really working toward that thing, and all of a sudden, listen, there became a dullness. I said there became a dullness to where all of a sudden you're like, is that the Lord? I'm not sure if that's the Lord or not. I'm fixing to show you in Scripture where every believer has, has a right to be able to discern if that's God or if that's not God. Amen? You may not know what it is, but you'll know that's not God. Amen? And, then, and that's all we need to know. Is that right? We don't need to know what it ain't. We just need to know if it's God, then that's what we're going. If it's not God, then no, that's not God. I don't know what that is, 
but I don't recognize that. How many of you know when you get sensitive to that witness? I'm helping somebody here tonight. I know I am. We get to that place where that witness becomes strong. We're like, oh, that's God. That's God. That's the way I'm going, right? I'm going that way. And then people, you might have, listen, I've, I made decisions where I knew that I knew that I knew I heard from the Lord. Again, I'm not talking about a voice. I'm talking about that witness on the inside was very distinct, very directive. And I got that. And then I made some really weighty, kind of like what you were saying, some weighty life-changing decisions but I knew that I, I knew that I had heard from the Lord, and I had people that didn't that were like, "You're missing it." Like I don't, I don't. And I said, "Unless you tell me that the Lord is telling you that I'm missing it, this is the way I'm going." No, I don't have a word from the Lord. I just doesn't feel right. It feels right to me, and this is what we're doing. And you know what? Looking back, the Lord was right on. I said, "The Lord was right on." I look back, and it was scary. Things didn't line up the way I thought they would. But looking back, I'm like, "Yep, God was God was in every bit of that." How many of you know that it pays to obey? And let me tell you this, it costs you to, it costs you to be dull. I've missed it. Listen, I'm not, listen, here, here's, I'm going to say this to you. We can be sensitive and we can grow dull and by his grace and mercy, we can grow sensitive again. Amen. He's merciful. He'll forgive us. He'll help redeem our time. He'll get us back over to a place where we can be sensitive again. But it takes our our effort and our pressing in to do that. Amen? Are you guys with me tonight? Is this okay? And and I I got to a place in my life where I knew that, um, that this is the direction that the Lord was leading. And I just, once you know, listen, once you get that and you know you got that witness on the inside... It's, you just like, I'm, this is the way we're going, and the Lord will always see you through. And if you miss it, listen, we can miss it. You, you feel like you're leading the direction, the Lord will show you to where you get more and more sensitive. All right, keys to sensitivity, increase sensitivity. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down, openness. Everybody say openness. Openness is a key to increase sensitivity. Um, it's easy in life to move too fast, especially in the culture that we live in. Pressure to answer questions, pressure to make decisions, pressures to buy this or to buy that. Um, When we get out ahead of God and we're trying to, we're trying to make decisions and we know that, that uh, we're, we're, we're just kind of making a rash decision. As I said earlier, we can, it can make, take sometimes maybe thousands of dollars or maybe years of our life to fix what we've messed up. You guys remember the story of Moses? Do you guys remember the story of Moses? God called him to be Israel's deliverer, right? And what did he do? He, he, was deliver, he was the deliverer of Israel, but he got out ahead of God. How many of you know what he did? You guys remember he killed the Egyptian? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Come on now, stay with me. Moses, he was anointed. He was, he was called by God. Israel didn't recognize that he was, that he was their deliverer. And, and um, Moses got out ahead of God. He wound up killing an Egyptian. Cost him 40 years out on the backside. Everybody say 40 years. 40 years out on the backside of the desert before the next opportunity came around for him to get back into that place again and begin to fulfill the call of God on his life. Come on now. I don't want to, listen, we don't want to take 10 years out of our life to try to fix what we messed up when the Holy Spirit was there all along trying to help us. Amen? And I know he didn't have the Holy Spirit there to help him, but we do. I said we do. And, and we can become sensitive to the point where where when we have a situation that is bearing down on us, that we can just back off a little bit. I said openness. We're like, you know what? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get back with you. How many remember the story where Jesus was being pressured by the religious leaders to, um, to make a decision on the woman who was caught with the, ish, with the uh, I'm sorry, with in, uh, uh, the adultery. She was caught in the act of adultery. You guys remember the story? Uh, I'm not going to all these scriptures. I can, I can, I think I have them here in my notes. But um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. But what did they begin to do? They began to pressure him to give us an answer. Moses' law say stoner. What do you say, Jesus? They wanted to know because they knew that the that Israel felt like he came as a redeemer. He came to save them, to help them. But the the religious leaders they wanted they they were pressing him with the law. For for Jesus, it was a no win situation unless. He got the word of the Lord. How many of you know Jesus was there as a man anointed by God? 
I said he was a man anointed by God. He had to, he had to get the direction just like you and I had. What did the Bible say he did? He bent down in the sand and began to draw, right? What was he doing? Tell us. What should we do with her? What should we do with her? Tell us. He didn't speak a word. How many of you know we just, we just back off? We're not, we're not real quick to make an answer. We're not quick to make a decision. We're just waiting on the Lord's direction. Amen? And then the Lord gave him the word. He said, those of you who are without sin, cast the first stone. Whoa. The Bible said they began to, dis- they dropped their rocks and began to walk away from the oldest to the youngest. They began to disperse. He diffused a complete volatile situation just by waiting and not answering too quickly. Amen? So sometimes um, when life begins to put pressure on us, we learn that we've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We just take a step back. Amen? Be looking for the Lord. Lord, I'm open. I'm, re- I'm looking to you. I'm looking on the inside. I'm waiting for that witness to go. And then the Lord will give you just the right thing to say or to do. And, and you'll walk away and you're like, that was God right there. Amen? You get in your vehicle and you just raise your hand and say, thank you, Lord. You helped me out of that situation. How many of you know that we can be in situations where we need the wisdom of God that we don't have? Amen? And it's true. So let's look there at, um, actually, I, I jumped down there. So, um, so yeah, I'm just talking to you about waiting on the Lord. Now, listen, when I say wait on the Lord, I'm not talking about being on your knees in your closet for, for four hours a day. I'm just talking about you're going on about your business, you're going on about your day, but you have that expectancy on the inside of you looking for His direction. Amen? How many of you know you can wait on the Lord while you're doing other things, but you know that you've petitioned the Lord, you're looking for an answer, and you're going on about your life, and you're waiting for that to come. And then boom, man, it comes. You're just minding your own business. How many of you have ever been just minding your own business, and you feel like the Lord just spoke something to you? You're like, whoo, I just got my answer. You weren't even paying attention. You weren't even just minding. You're just doing something else. And then there it came right there. Boom, right there. That's how the, many times you'll just be reading through Scripture and the Lord will speak to you. Yeah. Or that, that quickening will take place on the inside of you. Is this okay tonight? Yeah. So I, I'm just giving you keys to increase sensitivity. I have way more than I have time to give you tonight. But, um, but I want to get to some things that I think will help you. Jeremiah chapter 42, um, verses 1 through 7. I don't have time to go through all of that. But they were putting um, pressure on, um, on the priest there. And they told him, they said, you know, the prophet Jeremiah, they said, we need you to go to the Lord. We need you to get an answer for us. And, uh, and whatever the Lord says, that's what we're going to do. Look with me there at verse, verse number 7. For time's sake, you can go home and read this for your time's sake. What does the, um, the first three words say? After 10 days. Say 10 days. What if they wanted it one day? Guess what? He didn't have it. What about two days? Come on, man of God. What did the Lord say? He petitioned the Lord. The Bible says after 10 days, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. How many of you know we live in a, we live in a society unlike any other society ever before? They want it right now. And sometimes when you're waiting on the direction and the leading of the Lord, you don't get it right now. Amen? And so you have to be, listen, you have to be okay with just not giving an answer and just waiting until you get that answer. When you get it, you'll know you got it, and then you can give it with confidence. You'll be like, nope, that's the direction of the Lord right there. Amen? So go study that out. I don't really have time to get into all that, but um, it takes time sometimes to get an answer from God. Be patient. Be steadfast. Know that he's always, He has always come through for you, and He always will. We just have to be w- willing to wait to get a word from the Lord. Once you get the word from the Lord then you move. Amen? Yeah. Come on now. There's so many times when we just want to move out on ahead and do something, and then we got to back up and fix it, ask the Lord to forgive us. He's merciful. He will, but there's a better way. Yeah. Number two, the word, the uh, key to sensitivity, increased sensitivity is yielded. Everybody say yielded. yielded. The difference between openness and yielded, yielded is a little more difficult because... Um, when you're yielded to do something, you, you may be already, have you, when you're in a car and you have to yield, you're already moving in a certain direction, and now you, have to, now you have to be willing to stop or to go a different direction. Everybody say yielded. 
So here's the thing about yieldedness. When you're yielded to the Lord, Lord's direction, you may have already made up your mind. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. I'm already on board. I've already got some momentum. Here I go. And the Lord begins to deal with you. You're going the wrong direction. Do you guys remember Pastor Brecken's story about being in the end zone as a Texas Tech football player? Do you guys remember that story? And the Holy Spirit began, began to deal with him that he's going the wrong direction? Yeah. It's no fun to be going the wrong direction and the Holy Spirit tell you, you're going the wrong way. I need you to go this way. That's, that takes, listen, if you want God's best for your life, if you want to be able to move into areas of increased sensitivity or, or building, able to, to walk in the divine uh, direction and call of God on your life, it takes an openness and it takes a yieldedness to where you're willing to do something different than, what you, than your plans or your, your direction. Is this okay tonight? Let me tell you a quick story before we move on. I have so much I want to give you, and I don't have time really, but um, my family was in a situation. We didn't have enough money to really meet our needs. We were kind of in a place where we were just really believing God. We were sowing. We were doing what we knew to do, but, um, but we just weren't quite really where we, where we needed to be. And um, I had a situation where this guy came to me and said, hey, listen, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like second in command of one of the largest businesses here in town, and um, I'm going to offer you this position. Matter of fact, I'm going to create a position for you. Um, I'm going to pay you six figures. It was over $100,000 a year. I'm going to give you a brand new truck. And we're just, this is just going to be a sweet, sweet deal for you. And I'm like, wow, really? Like, that's awesome. And I went home and told my wife about it. And, and immediately, um, I had, a, I had a, a loss of peace on the inside and I kept trying to make that go away, but it just wouldn't go away. I'm talking about being yielded. And, um, and so I finally, I called this person up and I just said, you know, I don't really know what the deal is here, but I don't really have peace about this situation. He's like, well, what do you mean? Like, what do you not like about it? And I was like, well, really, I like everything about it. Uh, I, like, I like everything about it. But uh, something on the inside of me just doesn't feel right. And he's like, well, I want to meet with you and your wife. So I set up an appointment, and I go sit down, and uh, we're talking, and he makes the deal even sweeter. Like, he's telling me all about my 401k and how that, that I have all this money in my retirement, and, and like, he was telling me about all these other people that have all this money in their, in their accounts and all this stuff, and like, and you know, Denise and I are kind of drooling, you know, and, and <laughs> we're just like, wow. And so finally, I just kind of start pushing that down, you know, and I'm like, okay, we'll do it. Okay, we'll do it. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit's trying to help you, and sometimes you just kind of do your own thing? Amen? And so I start going through the interview process, and I'm, you know, weeks into this thing. I'm taking tests and all this stuff, you know, getting through all the red tape. And I get to the point where he's like, well, congratulations and welcome aboard. I meet all the high ups and everything. Welcome aboard. We're so excited for you to be here. And then he says, um, he says all you need to do is pass a drug test, and you are, you're on. And he had no idea, but I felt lower than I felt in a long time at that very moment. Because I knew that I knew that I knew I was going against that, that willingness, the, the, the Holy Spirit's peace on the inside of me was doing this to me. And so I looked at him. I walked out into the front yard and I said, listen, I know that you've gone a long, hard way to get me to this point. But I have completely, I've lost nights of sleep. I have really struggled with this situation. I don't know why, but I have no peace. And I apologize because I know I told you that I would do it, and I was, I was sincere in my decision, but I'm just telling you that. Everybody say yieldedness. I was yielding to that thing that the Lord was telling me, don't do this, don't go this way. I know it looks beautiful, but don't do it. And um, years, and then years later, I would just keep seeing that business going around, and I'm just like, you, you missed it. But I knew better because I knew in my heart of hearts, as soon as I made that decision, that peace came back. And I was like, Lord, you're protecting me from something. Years later, I found out that that whole department, those, all of that people, the, the people in that department, were fired. It was a really bad corruption situation going on. And I don't know all the details about it, but I know that I know that I know that the Lord protected me from a really bad situation. And I'm forever thankful for that. You know what? It's not all about the money. 
we, listen, we are not to be opportunity-led. We are not to be money-led. We are not to be, we are to be spirit-led. Amen? And the only way that we can grow in that and become uh, sensitive to what the Lord's trying to do is to be willing to be open, willing to be yielded. And then finally, um, number three, if I can kind of squeeze this one in, and this one's going to be a little bit uncomfortable for you, I think, but um, it's, it's, be, it's called holiness. Everybody say holiness. Now, when you say the word holiness, people get uncomfortable because they have all of these preconceived ideas of what holiness is. Well, I'm going to help you with that because holiness is not a set of rules and guidelines that you must follow to be, to be qualified as holy. Holiness, the best definition of the word holiness is Christ-likeness. Amen? Come on now. It's Christ-likeness. It's being more like Jesus. And, and so what does that mean? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about what holiness is. God is holy. We, saw, we sung a song tonight, we lift up holy hands. How many of you know our hands are called to be holy? You know that your hands are called to be holy? Our hands are called to be holy. Did you know um, the Scripture calls us holy saints? The Bible is called a holy Bible. The Spirit of God is called the Holy Spirit. The angels around His throne sing holy, holy, holy. How many of you know God's interested in holiness? Come on now. We are commanded to be holy even as God is holy. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 says, For it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. That's taken from Leviticus 11, 44. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Strive to live in peace with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever see the Lord. A lot of people will read that and think it means that you won't ever go to heaven. Well, it does include going to heaven and seeing God, but there's, if you'll study that out, what you'll come to realize is that without holiness, you'll fail to recognize or to perceive what is God and what's not God. Somebody missed a good opportunity to shout right there. Without holiness, listen to me, without holiness, there becomes a dulling, an insensitivity as to what the Spirit of God is wanting to say and do in your life. Without holiness, you become, uh, uh, you become, you have an inability to recognize, is that God? How many of you know, have you ever asked a question, you're just wondering if this is God? Come on, raise your hand if you think, man, is, you know, you've wondered, is this God? You know what I'm saying? You have a situation, Lord, is that you? Is that is that your leading and you're looking for a sign? The, listen, with holiness, with a, developed, a developed holiness, openness, and yieldedness, there's so many other areas, but, but when you develop in these areas, what happens is, is you become more and more sensitive to what the Lord's trying to do. And now, you, now because of that behavior in your life, you, you become ultra sensitive to what the Lord's doing. Now, listen, now you get to the point where He's not just trusting you to give your shoes away or to put $25 or to pay for someone's car payment or their house payment. Now he's waking you up in the night and giving you a specific word for someone's marriage. Now he's waking you up in the night and giving you a word for someone's daughter who's out, who's out you know, about to lose her virginity. And you, and, you, and you have a word from the Lord and you're saying, listen, this is none of my business, but the Lord woke me up and I, and I'm, I, I just feel like if I don't give this to you... Uh, Things could really go wrong for your family. Will you allow me to speak this into your life? Come on now. How many of you want to be used by God more than just putting money in the offering plate? Amen? Got to begin to, listen, he's looking for saints of God who's grown in their ability to yield to his spirit and to begin to do more, to bump it up where we're doing more for the kingdom of God. How many of you know the enemy is rampant about out there trying to take our kids away from us and we need saints of God who's growing in their relationship with God to go and snatch some of those families back into the kingdom. He's, and listen, the Lord knows my heart. I'm not bragging on myself, but I've had, I've had very difficult conversations with families about things that the Lord told me to tell them. And I was like, I don't want to tell them that. But then this is the only negative side of this being sensitive is when you get that, now you feel the burden that you've got to give it whether they receive it or not. Amen? Yeah. And, but here's, here's, what, here's one thing. Man, there's so much here. Many times the Lord won't give you something for someone if He knows they're not going to receive it. Yeah. Did you know that? 
If you're not open, if you're not open for the Lord's correction or the instruction, there, there's times when the Lord will not even give someone that direction for you or that correction for you because He knows you're not in a place to receive it. Everybody say openness. We need to stay open in our lives to where, Lord, if, if I'm missing it, if I'm in an area of my, if there's an area in my life where I'm missing it, I want you to know I'm open for correction. Come on now. Anybody in here like that? You, you're open for the Lord to help you. That reminds me of 2, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is inspired by God and, and is profitable. The Lord wants to profit us with the Scriptures. And anybody that comes to you that speaks... Here, here, just relax a little bit. If the Lord gives you anybody in your life that speaks something to you, it'll bear witness with your spirit to be truth. Come on now, right? Listen, if it doesn't bear witness with your spirit, throw it out. But if somebody comes to you and they speak a word... What they're saying is the Lord, the word of the Lord to you. It'll be, you'll know that you know that you know. That's exactly right, and you'll say that to them. And I had a woman that did that to me. I said, "Listen, I don't want to tell you this. I'm not judging you, but this is what the Lord gave me." And I took her to the scripture, and she said, "You're right. I've completely blown in that area. I have completely missed it. I, I just want to repent and ask you to forgive me and ask the Lord to forgive me." I said, well, "That's between you and the Lord. Let's pray." I turned right around, I walked out, thank goodness I had my wife with me. I turned around and walked out, and the next thing I know, she was accusing me of, of all these terrible things that, that, um, that, I had, that I never even said to her in the first place. And she, what, she, what happens is, as many times when the Lord uses you, I'm out of time, when the Lord uses you in that way, and they're open, it convicts, the Holy Spirit's there to bring the conviction and the correction when, they, when you walk out, the enemy's there, and he starts messing. Come on now. I just challenge you right now. If the Lord ever gives you a word, you resist that. Amen? If you receive that word and you believe that that's, that's a correction for you, how many of you know we just need to man up and say, Lord, I just received that correction? Come on now. Is this okay tonight? And, and, and but you, did you know that it was, wasn't probably six months or a year later, she wrote me a letter and apologized and just she went right back to that place where the Lord had tried to bring healing in her life and, and went back to that place and then receive the Lord, receive the Lord's correction. Amen? The Lord's not trying to embarrass you or to bring shame on you. He's trying to help us get through this life and, and come into a place where He can use us more. Amen? Is this okay? Man, I'm out of time, but I have a lot to that, that I wanted to cover. So um, I'm having fun. Are you guys having fun tonight? All right. So as believers, we are expected to discern what is God and what's not God. And... Um, and holiness becomes an area in our life to where, to where we can do that. I have a joke for you I'm going to tell you in just a little bit, just to kind of lighten things up. I know some of you guys are looking at me kind of funny, but, but uh, I, I speak the word in, in, in sincerity and truth, and I believe that it's the, Lord, the word of the Lord that the Lord gave to me. So um, things that we yield to that grieve the Holy Spirit can cost us far more than we realize that it's costing us. And, and let me just say this, when... When, did you know that, that your conscience is the voice of your spirit? Everybody say, my spirit. Say that again, my spirit. my spirit. So you are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. It's your spirit that becomes born again when you make Jesus Lord of your life. Amen? Yeah. Nicodemus asked Jesus, how can a man be born again? How can he enter into a mother's womb? And Jesus said, Jesus, that's when Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is like, what is that? And he said, that which is spirit is spirit. You become made brand new, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Do I have any born-again believers in the house tonight? We are a speaking spirit. Don't leave out the speaking part. His spirit, the Holy Spirit, comes upon and lives in our heart and in our lives, and he influences our spirit to make right choices. Amen? Are you with me tonight? So here's what I want to say. When you're sitting in, a, in your own living room or your own home or you go out to watch a movie or you go do something and you're there and the whole time you have your spirits like, turn that off, get away from that, don't look at that, don't listen to that, and you override that and you just sit there through that thing anyway, you, what you've done is you, you've dulled your ability to be able to receive from the Lord. You've become dull in that, in that season. And it's going to cost you a lot more than you realize it's going to cost you. It could potentially cost you a life because when the Holy Spirit's trying to help you not go this way or go that way or do this or do that, it could cost you tremendously. Amen? It, listen, it's not a luxury. When, I, when we lived in Honduras, I remember telling the Lord, it's no, in Honduras, in a third world country, 
it's not, a, it's not just a luxury to be led by the Spirit. It becomes mandatory to be flowing and yielded to the Holy Ghost. It's very critical. There's people that will kill you and not think twice about it in places like that. It's crazy. Anyway, but my point is, is that God can get us to a place where, where when He begins to deal with us, I was talking about you, to you about your voice, the voice of your conscience, which is the voice of your spirit, deals with you about things that you ought not to be saying, doing, places you're, you're going, things that you're looking at, and He's telling you, that's not for you. That's, that's darkness, that's not light, that's not moving you toward the Lord. Here, there's a, one, one minister said it this way, do the afterward check. After you're done, see how you feel. On, do you feel closer to God or further away from God? Come on now. How many of you have ever done something and you feel like, man, you need to go like, like go wash that off? You may feel like that. You're less like, I, I mean, I've sat on, have you ever, has anybody ever watched a movie? I'm not talking about something like totally horrible, but you watched the movie and it like hung with you for like three days. You're just like, man, I can't get that out of my mind. Did you know, uh, and I'm going to close with this because I'm running out of time. Did you know that, all right, stay with me. That when we, take, when we take communion, when we take of the elements, the juice and the bread, what are we doing? What are we actually doing when we, that's the, um, there's only two ordinances in the Word of God. One is the communion, the other is baptism. When we partake, everybody say partake. When we partake of the communion elements, what are we doing? We're fellowshipping with, with the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. Are we not? We're fellowshipping. We're we are, we are, when you come to church and the minister ministers to you, you're fellowshipping, you're, you're, you are yielding, opening your heart to, to the Lord ministering to you. And how many of you know when we leave here, we feel closer to God than we did before we came, hopefully. Amen? Amen? What happens when we're fellowshipping or we're partaking of something that's not light, it's not moving us toward God, and when we get done, we feel further away from God, we don't feel... What are we doing? We're actually fellowshipping with the very spirits that influenced Hollywood to make that thing in the first place. We're yielding and opening ourselves up to a, a darkness that we have no business. The Bible says, what fellowship hath light with darkness? Come on now. What fellowship do you have? But it just feels good. I just really like, I just really like the series. Well, what are you fellowshipping with? What are you communing with? What are you partaking? What are, what, are you, what are you dulling yourself to the point of to where God can't use you in a, in a miraculous way that he wants to use you tomorrow, the next week, the next, next year to take you and maybe somebody's family and just completely redirect their family because you stayed sensitive. Everybody say, bump it up. I'm just talking about keys to increase sensitivity it's not going to happen overnight. And listen, we're living in the end times where if there's ever been a, an easier way to get dulled in this life, it's just live, living in the, in the 21st century. Amen? It's everywhere. But you can, and you, it is expected of a believer to, when you're first born again, man, your spirit's like so sensitive to the Lord. But immediately the enemy's going to work dulling you, working on dulling you, working on dulling you, and things that the Holy Spirit's trying to... But what does the Bible say? Um, I already got off my notes, but he says, With, above all things, guard your heart, your spirit, for out of it flows the issues of life. Amen? Amen. Above all things. Proverbs 4, um, Proverbs 4.20. I could quote all that, but I don't want to go there. Also, finally, we're gonna, I'm going to wrap this up in um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. But the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter, in latter times, some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Verse 2, through the hypocrisy and the pretensions of liars whose consciousness are seared or carterized. It become, it's a hardening of your sensitivity, of your ability to be sensitive to what the Lord's trying to do. I don't want to... Have you ever... If you, I know a lot of you ladies, maybe, maybe not too much anymore, but back in the day, there was a lot of ironing at home going on. I still iron something. Anybody iron at home? And if you ever, if you ever seared something, like, like where it's just like, man, I, I walked into the kitchen one time, and I left my iron down, and I came back, and it was seared, like crispy, you know? That's how our, our sensitivity to the Spirit gets. It just becomes like this callous. And the Holy Spirit's like, don't do that. And there's just no feeling. It's just like. There's no, there's no nerve endings there. 
I want to be, I want my nerves to just be exposed to the Holy Spirit. Like all he's going to do is just go, bink. I'm like, yes, sir. Did you speak, Lord? Amen. Is this okay? There's so much more I could talk about. Um, but but uh, I, I just think that the, my purpose tonight was to stir you a little bit along the lines of that there is an increased sensitivity, that the Lord does want to use us at greater levels and, and cause us to be, uh, to be greater blessings in the lives of other people, but we have to be willing to pay the price. Uh, there was a story that I'm just reminded of that um, Kenneth Hagin was in the, in the seat. I think he was with um, Norval Hayes, and Norval Hayes saw a guy in a wheelchair and he asked, the, and he asked Kenneth Hagin, he said, um, and, and they were in the car and they pulled up and the guy was in the wheelchair on outside of the car and he asked him about, um, about that guy being healed and he said, um, and I'm going to butcher this, but what he said was, if, if somebody's willing to pay the price, that guy can be healed. How many of you know we have a price to pay? I'm not talking about your salvation. Jesus paid the price for our salvation. I'm talking about a higher level of being used by God to where we we can do awesome things for for our own families and for other families because of of a discipline in our lives that we don't allow allow ourselves to become dulled or desensitized. I'm not preaching condemnation in there because I don't care how far you've missed it. I don't care how deep or how far away you've gotten. There's mercy and there's grace and there's room for us to get back to that place where we can become sensitive again. Amen? I've missed it. There's things in my life where I'm just like, Lord, forgive me. I I allowed that. I should not have allowed that. And you know what I do? I just put pressure against it. Like, nope. Nope. Why? Because we all have flesh. Amen? We all have weaknesses in in our body. And we, we can become very good with the grace and the mercy of God in our lives to become sensitive and, and to protect ourselves from de- becoming desensitized to the things of God. Is this okay? Amen. So I told you I was going to tell you a joke, and I, I think I'm going to just because we need to lighten it up a little bit in here. But um, I said, instead of moving in the direction to the point of being rain trained, which is a horse that is actually being sensitive to the leather straps on his neck, we become more like that stubborn mule who can become dull of hearing and dull of understanding, that's not our desire, right? I don't want to be like that, that, that mule that's dull of hearing. It reminded me of a joke when I was doing this, this and this, um, and it was, I guess this guy in Mexico was trying to buy this horse from this guy, and um, he, he really needed a horse, and he asked the guy how much for the horse, and he gave him the price, and, and the guy was like, really, that's a good price? Oh, he said, yeah, but he don't look he too good. And the guy looked at me, he said, he looks fine to me. And he's like, I'm telling you, he don't look he too good. And so he bought the horse and jumped on, and the horse ran right off into a bar ditch. And he's like, what's wrong with this crazy horse? He got back up, took off again, and he ran, right, ran him right into a tree. He finally figured out that horse was completely blind. <laughs> he took the horse back to the guy. He's like, you didn't tell me the horse was blind. He said, I told you, he don't look he too good. <laughs> so anyway, that was his way of communicating that um, that horse can't see too well. But how many of you know, as believers, we can become sensitive in what we can see, amen? We can perceive the things of God and not be like that horse that don't look he too good. We can be like, Lord, I see, I see, that's God right there. I'm doing that right there. That's for me right there. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise, Lord. I give you all the credit. You helped me with that. Pastor Brecken said this many times, the Lord will make you look way smarter than you are. How'd you know to do that? Uh, I just, let, being led by the Holy Ghost, Amen. He'll lead you to buy a piece of property that, that doesn't look like it's going to do anything and skyrocket out and make you a millionaire, whatever. Pastor John, it's not all about the money. Y'all have too much emphasis on the money. Listen, it ain't about the money. It's about, it's, it's about you being obedient to the Lord and doing what he tells you to do. Amen? Amen? And if he makes you wealthy, guess what? You're just that much more of a blessing to do for other people. There's a lot of need in this world. There's a lot of people that the Lord can lead you. I want to, I'm going to say this before we close. It's 8.30, and I wasn't going to go this long, but I want to challenge you, and I think I've said this before. Believe God to stir you. This is about being sensitive to stir you to do something specific for someone else. Amen? It's one thing to just be a blessing to someone. It's a whole other thing when the Spirit of God deals with you to do something, and then you obey it 
you obey Him and you do that. That's a whole nother level. Because now you've just obeyed the Lord, and, and I don't have time to go into it, but it's powerful when, the, when you're like, man, the Lord told me to do this. And let me tell you this. If you, listen, I'll just tell you right now. If you believe, start believing God for Him to tell you and be specific about doing something for someone or being a blessing, it's not going to be easy. He'll never tell you something. You're going, oh, sure, no problem. Yeah, that's easy. No, it's always going to be a stretch for you because it's a stretch of faith. But when you step out, it's like Peter, when Peter stepped out of the boat, he stepped out on the Word of God, amen? And he did what nobody else has ever done before. And that's where I want to be. I want to be willing to step out. If I miss it, well, praise God, he'll, he'll take me by the hand and lift me back up, amen? And so, but just do that. With, do that. Man, to believe God. I'm believing God to, to begin to deal with me specifically to do things. Like, Lord, wake me up in the night. Help me. I want to be sensitive to you. Does anybody want to be sensitive to the Lord? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for the word. Thank you, Jensen, for playing behind me. Father, I I pray that my words have been, uh, if nothing more, Lord, just a um, a, a Holy Ghost prod to prod the body of Christ tonight, to to do more, to bump it up in in their ability to to be pleasing to you, to live a life that is uh, sensitive and is obedient to the Spirit. And as you begin to deal with us and to show us and to help us, Lord, that it'll be an exciting time for us to be yielded and obedient to the things of God. And Lord, I decree and declare there's people right now in the, under the sound of my voice, you're going to come up and you're going to come out of some situations. And you're going to come up and you're going to come out and you're going to look back and you're going to say, look what the Lord has done. And it's going to be because it's going to be partly because you have opened your heart and yielded to what the Lord has been wanting to do a long time in your life anyway. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That was some strong unction for somebody right there. So, Lord, I thank you right now that we are, we're going to become, uh, we're going to increase in our ability to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit And we are expecting you to show us things about our family, things that pertain to us and our family. And even, Lord, as we get good at that and we practice that, you'll even help us to help other families and do other things for other people. And, Lord, we desire to be used mightily of you, that people will, that that through our act of obedience and, and growing in our ability to be sensitive, we will inspire others to walk in that same path. And I thank you, Lord, that when it's at the end of the day, the Lord be glorified. At the end of the day, we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Thank you for enduring that. I know I kept you a little longer. Um, I just had to get that out, and I'm so thankful for the opportunity. I I, I truly love and appreciate the opportunity to just um, speak the word. Lift up pastor this week as he's out. I'm not sure exactly when he's coming back. Oh, corn dogs. Okay. Corn dogs. Uh, when pastor's coming back. But, um, but keep it lifted up in your prayers. And uh, if you will, please take the time to, to just brag on your pastor. Tell him that you love him tonight before you go home. We do have corn dogs in the snack bar. God bless you. You are dismissed.